All right, everybody, today we're going to be talking about how you can create a folder in Microsoft OneDrive, as well as share that folder out, as well as individual content. And then perhaps maybe you might want to know what you have and have not shared out. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so today Kaylee's going to take us from the top here and show us how to create those folders and then be able to get into a little bit more advanced things of how you can actually see what you've shared out. And that's pretty important, right? Because you might yeah. want to know what you have and have not shared out. Because if your memory is anything like mine, it may not always remember everything that you've ever done since the dawn of time. So right. Kaylee, with that, can you kind of get us going here? Yes. And if you guys have not already seen our video on how to create a Microsoft account and, and create your OneDrive, make sure to check out that video, which we'll have in the description below. But first, let's talk about creating the folder itself. Okay, I'm going to share my screen here and we're going to check it out. So you're going to click the add new button in the top left. Thankfully, it's big and blue. So you should not be able to miss it, but we're going to click on that and choose to add a folder. Once we have done that, it's going to ask you to enter the folder name. For this purpose, I'm going to say YouTube content. All right, once you're done creating that folder name, you're going to click the button create. And just like that, you've created your first folder and it is going to appear right here in the my file section. Will it? Will we ever know? <laughs> All right, and now you can see that folder right here, and you have the opportunity to upload or download things inside of it, right? So if I wanted to upload something to it, I would just click into that folder and then choose to add content to it by clicking Add New, and then I can upload right here. And boom, there it is. So now you can choose to upload and download the contents from this folder, and you can choose to share the folder out. So how you would share this folder out is you would, just like where I'm at right now, inside of the folder, right? So let's go back. This is my files. I've clicked in on the folder. There's two different ways that you can share this out, so I'm showing you this first way. Click the button Share at the top of your screen here. And you can choose to share this by an email, okay? You can also choose to just copy the link right here and share it in whatever way you'd like, via text message or, you know, something else. Um, something that you need to note is this little icon right here up the top. Anyone with the link can edit. If you click on that, it's going to open this whole new link setting section. This is a very important section. It has to do with what Bobby was talking about at the beginning of this video, right? Because you can choose to send out this link and anybody that has access or just has that link can pull that up and have total access to the folder. You might want that or you might not, okay? The other way that you can do it is by a specific person or specific people. So when you click on that, who you send this to is the only person that can have access to that, okay? So if they have another email, it's not going to be able to open this folder and have access to this folder. Then underneath this, you've got even more settings. You can choose, once you've chosen if you want it to be a specific person or specific people, or if you want it to be anyone with the link, you then can choose what they can do when they click on the link, okay? They can choose to either edit it or they can only view it, all right? So viewing means they can't make changes to it, but editing means that they can. So not only do they have access to the folder and they can see the contents inside of it, they can also delete and upload stuff to that folder. So keep that in mind when choosing to share this. Now, something to keep in mind, too, is as you can see at the very top, it's telling you that it's sharing out the YouTube content folder right now. Mm -hmm. Now, Kaylee's going to show you how you can do individual files. Right. Now, another thing that's important that isn't being demonstrated here is if you're an administrator and you're working for a company, uh, they may limit your capability of what you can share. Yeah. Typically, out of your OneDrive, um, what they may do is they may say, you know what, we don't want you to just have anonymous sharing, which is 
that anyone can do. So yeah. that is potentially could be grayed out because your administrator is not allowing you to do that. And you have to specify specific people that you have mm -hmm. to share access to information. So just know that sometimes it might be a little different based on your administrator. And if that's the case, just reach out to them and ask them how they can maybe help you get around that. That's a great point. Yes. And the last thing I want to note about this area is that you can choose a date. Okay. This date, what it does, which I don't have premium, see how it's saying that. So it's not going to allow me to, but you can choose to add a date of expiration of the link. This can be super helpful. So you know that they won't have access in this way for eternity and you don't have to keep track of this for forever. I do this a lot. Bobby, do you use this feature a oh, lot yeah. as well? It's I, I don't share a link unless it's got an expiration date or it's set to a specific user. It's just a policy that I kind of try to adhere yeah. to. And now if you have a business premium uh, 365 license, uh, it covers like that message that you're seeing pop up because this is a personal account that Kaylee's doing the demonstration on. That's why you're seeing that. Mm -hmm. But your users, if you have them set up, that wouldn't show up for them because the right. license would cover that. Right. Yes. So once you've gotten these settings here, oh, I do want to note too, with that business license, when you have the premium or that business license that's under that umbrella, you can also set a password, mm -hmm. which is important to note. If you want to, you know, make it more secure, whatever you're sharing, maybe you're nervous about the information that you're sharing. It's something with accounting, it's right, something with HR, whatever that might be. And you really want to make sure that that's secure. You can create a password here as well for it. Yeah, to kind of double down on what you're saying there is because when you have a specific user, it's going to require them to validate who they are with their username and password through some mm -hmm. process. Uh, it mm -hmm. might be that they get a text message or other things. So there's a little bit of an additional hoop. Whereas if you just set it based on a password, like Kaylee's talking about, you could just text it to a group chain or an individuals to say, right. okay, here's what this is. Now you lose the validation process that goes through other than the fact that they just kind of know the password. Mm -hmm. So it, I would kind of like rate you know, anyone then setting it up with a password, uh, with an expiration and then mm -hmm. like specifying a specific user of, yeah. of level of probably safer way of sharing content. Right. Right. Going from least safe to most. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. I agree. Uh, for the sake of this video, I, I am going to click anyone though, but again, it's totally up to what you're going to do and what you want to do. Um, so once you're done with these settings, oh, there's the setup password, which I don't have access to do. Um, you're going to click apply once you're done with all of this information and filling out what you want to do. And when you do that, it's going to update what this looks like here to, to, you know, reflect what you chose. So if I would have chosen a specific person and clicked apply, see how that now changes to people you specify can, can edit. So I'm going to switch that back to anyone. And I'm not actually going to send this at, via an email. I'm actually just going to copy the link. But if you wanted to, you would just type the email that you'd like to send this to. And the message is going to send to them like an email, right? So this is going to be the message of the email sending to them. And then you'll just click the send button. Okay. This little button here um, also as like a quick access to choose if they can view or they can edit, which is the same settings that we clicked up here. Okay. Then I am going to copy this link here. Notice how it shows it right here and you can choose to copy it to your clickboard, click, clickboard, clipboard. <laughs> Let's get that right. And then I can choose to paste that wherever I'd like. So here, let's, let's do right here inside of this OneNote, I'm going to click paste and it has pasted the, the link here. Oh, it's, it's pasted it twice. It seems like just for verification, I guess. All right. So that was how I shared the folder itself. Now, if you would like to share a specific file under a folder, you would hover over, you can, well, you can choose two different ways. You can either click on it directly, or you can choose to hover over it and click this, share this item with other people. So you can either share it with this icon or click it and choose the share option above. Okay. Once you do that, and you click the share button, it's going to pull up the exact same looking 
um, send link box that we saw previously with the folder. Let's now, pause there for just a second. One of the things oh, yeah. you see at the bottom, see where it says shared with. So now yeah. you're already standing, you get some additional context that this has been shared. So the icon right there says KF, which that's you. Right. And then the other indicator is just to show it's a link. It's a share link. In other words, anyone with that link can access it. So it's not going to have a name. Mm -hmm. But if you had a specific user that you shared it with, like you said, their initial sense. would be there. Right. Or a group of users initials would be there. Yes. So that icon is saying that this folder, which has this file that you're trying to share underneath it, has right. already been shared. shared by a link somehow. Can't specify where, but it has been shared. So that's super, like Bobby is saying that because it is very helpful to know this information if you're trying to keep track of what files and folders you're sharing out to others. So right now I'm sending a link to a file that's underneath a folder that has already been shared out to others. And the reason that I know that I'm sending a link to this file versus the folder itself is notice how Bobby was sharing that this title before was saying YouTube content, which was the title of the folder. Now it says Mount CMMC YouTube thumbnail right, which is the title of the file itself. So that's how you can keep track on if you're sharing the file or the folder because you don't want to accidentally share the entire folder to somebody when you actually meant to just send them one file right. inside of the folder. So keep track of that by the title above. Then all the rest of the settings are going to be the same, okay? Now, the other way, again, the other way looks exactly the same. So if I clicked on this, this file and I clicked share here, the exact same thing pops up, right? So there's there's no difference there. Um, anything else you want to add to this before? Yeah, if you if you kind of mouse over the the file, for example, and you hit the three dots mm -hmm. that are next to it, um, you're going to have some additional content. One of the things that I like to see is the manage access option, which mm -hmm. will sort of take you into the shared folder concept of where you were at before. This little menu is nice versus going to the shared section just to be able to get an idea. Uh, yeah. This will kind of sort of tell you where it's coming from. Uh, so if you look at the links section there, you'll kind of see, okay, where did this link come from? So this link is shared uh, to the folder. See the YouTube content. So you know, okay, this is coming from the folder. And you can see that it's there and you can recopy it. How right. many times have you shared something and you're like, how the heck do I get to this link that I just shared? This is right. the way that you can do it. You can get here and then you just hit copy again. But mm -hmm. interestingly enough, you can change the using the gear, like what options that were done by this. So you could mm -hmm. perhaps change some things or as well that you can delete it. Maybe, yeah. you know, you have shared enough and you're finished. You want to take your toys and leave, hit remove link and it'll go. Mm -hmm. Boom, there it goes. Yes, this is so helpful. It's also very helpful, I would say, especially if you're looking into a folder, right? right. Because you can see this link section will tell you which um, files under that folder actually have links attached to it. Right. That is very useful information and would definitely recommend you keeping track of that every once in a while. So that like what Bobby showed before, if you want to delete those links so people don't have access to those, you can. And it's also if you go to look at a file and you're like, wait a minute, I notice in, in there that it's already showing things being shared. And you're like, well, where's this exactly coming from? And I want to track right. it down. The manage access is a beautiful thing. They added it, I think, maybe a year or two ago. I, I could be wrong. It could be a little bit further back. But that's been very, very helpful. You yeah. only have access to that from the website. Um, yeah. But uh, you can still invoke it from the sync client, which Scaly will show to you a little bit later mm -hmm. um, in some other videos, I believe. But the you can, when you're actually in File Explorer on your actual computer without a web browser open, you can right click and say manage access and it takes you basically to this screen where you're at yeah. right now. Yes, that's a great point. So Bobby did share these three dots here that you can click next to a file. I did just want to mention that when you click on that, there is an option to move to or copy to. I feel like those two things are very important to mention to you guys because you can choose to move this to another folder if you'd like just by clicking move to. It'll pull up this window where you can go back to my files and choose, let's say you wanted to put it into documents instead, right? You would click on that folder and then click 
move here. Once you do that, it will take that and move it right there. Okay. Then, oh, now I have to find the file again. <laughs> Let's go back to documents. Then another option that you can do is choose copy to. Okay. This is different, right? Because it is creating a copy of this file and putting that somewhere. Okay. So instead of moving it, you're copying. So what it looks like is let's go back to my files and choose YouTube content and say copy here, right? This doesn't move because you didn't move it. You just copied it to somewhere else. So when I go back out to my files and go to YouTube content, there is a new copy of that inside of that folder as well. Okay? It's important to realize when you're moving files that at the time of this recording, uh, it does sever the sharing. So mm -hmm. just know that um, you know, you can move stuff, but if you go to move it, you might lose what's been shared out. So what does that mean? That means like, if you're like, oh, I don't really want to put this here, but you happen to notice by going to uh, manage access, you see that things have been shared out. Just know that there might be some consequences when you go to move it. So if you go to do that, you might have to reshare it out to some individuals. Right. It's, I mean, it, it's the same idea as like, let's say you lived in a home and people were sending mail to you with that email, with that, with that email, right. with that address to your, to your home. If you move to another home and they still use the same address of your previous home, it's not, it's not getting to you. You're going to have right. to give them the new one. You know, the last thing that we want to mention in today's video is once you have shared a um, document or folder with somebody, just like how we said in the video before, the shared section is a great, uh, great way. <laughs> the shared section is a great way to keep track of that. So if you go into the shared tab, and remember, we shared a link to a to a file. Um, using the anyone with a link can can see this. Um, so it's not going to be under with you. It's going to be under by you because we shared it with right. someone else, right? So you're going to click on that by you tab and notice, boom, right there is the file that we shared with somebody, um, which again, we did not specify um, the user that we shared it with. We did not specify by an email. We just used the anyone with the link can edit this and it still shows it there because it knows you did somehow <laughs> share this via a link. We don't know with who, but we know that you did share it. So that's very useful information um, for you to keep track of your documents and what you have shared and not shared. Now, Kaylee, if you highlight that, if you go ahead and click on it, mm -hmm. You have oh. options to then be able to change the way that it's being shared. If you're like, wait a minute, why is this being shared? I don't want to share it anymore. You can go ahead under the manage access and change, which we showed you earlier, how you can then turn that off by going to links and just going ahead and removing it. Mm -hmm. So, and also one thing that you notice is like, let's go ahead and do something a little bit more eating your tail inception kind of concept is if you <laughs> go back to the, my files, you can share uh -huh. the folder that's above it, right? Which we talked about. Uh, how you could do that. Go ahead mm -hmm. and let's just go ahead and share it so you can see what it looks like if you share as a folder. Okay. Um, yep. And just go ahead and hit copy. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So now if we go back to that shared uh, section and we look, you'll see that by you, now you have that shared twice. So what does that mm -hmm. mean? That means if you remove the ability to see something from the YouTube current folder, someone could still have access to the individual file that you <laughs> shared out individually. So right. again, you do have to be a little mindful and pay attention as you're initially doing your sharing from stuff because you can kind of have it, you know, a snake eating its own tail uh, that from things that you perhaps may be a little bit more sensitive that you want to be more careful about sharing. Um, yeah. Maybe just share just that one individual file or folders and pay attention when you're doing the share, uh, that little links like we showed before at the bottom to kind of give you an indication whether that's already being shared out. So you can kind of know and try to track where that's coming from and then appropriately share it. Uh, based on what your need is. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this second video about OneDrive and how to share information. We hope you enjoyed today's content and tune in for the next week um, where we're going to talk about how to sync uh, your OneDrive to your PC. So thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Look at my beautiful swipe. Did you see that? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Wow, so I've never seen such beauty.